But you're always in the paper if you're famous. It's never that bad. Uh, the last thing that annoyed me even slightly was the son called up and said, oh, we, uh, we know what house you've bought. I went, yeah. I said, we're going to show pictures of it tomorrow. I said, why are you going to do that? And they went, well, we're going to be nice about it. And I thought, well, they could have just done it, but they've warned me, and it, you know, keep on side, and I've got a good relationship, I think. And I went, oh, okay. I said, but don't say where it is, and don't say how much it is. So I did it the next day, and went, it's in Hampton, and it cost two and a half million, which really annoyed me, because it cost three and a half. <laughs> And when you put in for planning permission, you, put, you know, we put in, what, well, do a swimming pool, uh, put that in, that's public record. No one told me, so it just appeared in two papers the next day, right? But even though they had the same little bit of information, they embellished in completely different ways, right? And the first paper went with Gervais is in hot water with the neighbours, right? They fear my swimming pool's going to be so big that London's going to cave in, right? <laughs> the second one went with Gervais is a splash with the neighbours. They love me. Right. And this is an example I have to sort of like fill column inches and sort of make It's quite sweet, really. Gervais forked out more than two million for the house in September. <laughs> he is said to want to settle down with his girlfriend of 20 years. That's settled enough, isn't it? <laughs> Leaving the wild lifestyle behind him. <laughs> now, you're not to know this, but I am usually in my pyjamas by 6pm. <laughs> I come home from work. The telly goes on, the pyjamas go on. Even if there's company, it's, you know what I mean? My house, my rules, pyjamas on. And if we've got, you know, relatives around, Jane says, oh, not the ones with the holes in. That's all she asks. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? You don't need your mother-in-law when you bend over. It's like the last chicken in the window going, he's got a tumour. You know what I mean? It's just, <laughs> no. But you don't want to throw them away. Your pyjamas, they get nicer with age. They get soft, don't they? And they fit you just right. No one's going to see them. You just... I actually invented a game with an old pair of pyjamas with a hole in them. No, you know when it gets sort of really thin in the gusset, then suddenly a little hole appears. You get like a, a quarter of an inch sort of hole. And when blokes are watching telly, we sort of, we sort of doodle. Do you know what I mean? It's, I don't know why. We, it's sort of like a comfort thing. I think it's anthropological. I think chimps do it. Um, not on me, on them. I don't... No good to me. They haven't got opposable thumbs or anything, so... I have never tried to get a chimp to wank me off, so let's nip that one in the bud. <laughs> and I discovered, right, that if I pulled out miscellaneous bits of skin, right, no, could be a bit of scrotal sack, could be a hint of foreskin. You only put it out half an inch, you've got a guess with that's the, it's called awful Jim Jam. No. <laughs> and you just pull it out, just half an inch, right, and you turn to your girlfriend and you go, Awful Jim Jam, cock or ball. <sighs> it might be genius. Um, I'm thinking of selling that to Waddington's. <laughs> if only for the picture on the box of all the family. Grandad doing that, little, little <laughs> cock or ball. <laughs> Granny going... <laughs> Actually, Grandad could really pull it out, couldn't he? Shut up, you'll be playing at home. <laughs> Awful Jim Jam, cock or ball. <laughs> <laughs> but the trouble about rumour is, if it's written down, someone will believe it. You could have the most far-fetched, made-up, impossible, illogical bollocks. And if it's in print, someone will believe it. Just look at the Bible. <laughs> um, no, um, Old Testament. Oh, that's my favourite. That is a rip-roaring read, the Old Testament. It's brilliant. I like the God in that one. He's a better God. New Testament God, he's a bit wishy-washy. He's a bit modern parent. Do you know what I mean? He's a bit liberal. Oh, turn the other cheek. No, Old Testament God, he's like 50s dad. He takes his belt off and goes, you fucking what? <laughs> oh, you know the fucking rules. I've told you. You wound me right up, you muppet. You, oh, you fu fucking floods. You, pestilence, fuck off. <laughs> you, what did you do? That's not too bad. M.E. <laughs> I've been an atheist since I was about eight or nine. And um, when I went to secondary school, by then I knew about natural selection, the Big Bang Theory, carbon dating, and the Earth was four billion years old. And so my poor RE teacher, I was the bane of his life. And looking back, he was a bit thick. Right? He was one of those teachers that I thought, oh, fuck it, I'll just keep my head down. He, he, you know what I mean? He came in on a motorbike and played table tennis all day with the div kids just to keep... You know what I mean? You know the sort, don't you? And he hated me. He hated me because I was smart 
and I wouldn't let him get away with any bollocks, right? So when he said things like, and God made the heaven and the earth in six days, and uh, the earth is 5,000 years old. Oh, no, it isn't. <laughs> no, it's four billion years old. Is, why, how could he do that? Uh, God can do anything. Well, why did he do it in six? Why did he do it in five? Let's, let's push him a little bit. Let's, you know. <laughs> and he was saying that um, everything that happens, God does. He's done everything. Everything that happens, he means to happen. He's on top of it. He's everywhere. And everything he does is good. And I went, well, that's clearly not true either. Why are newborn babies taken from their parents? They're innocent. What, why are some people born into abject poverty? And he went, because God moves in mysterious ways. That is the theological equivalent of going, look over there. Ooh. <laughs> it's not an answer, is it? We swear on the Bible in a court of law, still. And if the judge was to say to you, how do you account for the fact you say you're home asleep at midnight, but we found your DNA at the scene of the crime, and you went, I move in mysterious ways. Good night, it won't wash. <laughs> this is how stupid this teacher was. A kid asked him, he said, sir, why do we swear on the Bible in a court of law? Clearly, the answer is, if you believe in God, if that's your God, you believe in him, you believe he's watching you, you get a guilt trip, you don't lie. He hadn't worked that out. So thinking on his feet, he said, um, because every law of the land is mentioned in the Bible. I went, no, it isn't. No, it isn't. He went, no, it is. Somewhere in the Bible, every law of this land is mentioned. I went, what, well, even video piracy, you fucking... <laughs> One critic, who I know is religious, said, oh, Gervais deconstructs the Bible. That's too easy. I think, well, it shouldn't be. If you believe in that, you think it's a serious doctrine, it shouldn't be too easy to decode. You can't do it with a maths book. You can't look through a maths book and go, listen to this. Listen to go, oh. The shortest distance between two points is a straight line. What cunt wrote that? <laughs> he said that um, God is everywhere and in everything. He's solidly through the universe. And I came prepared. I thought, this will end it. I came in like a little smart ass and went, Sir, is God in a vacuum which has been scientifically proved to have nothing in it? He went, yep. <coughs> That's it. I thought, well, I can't win then. So I started saying, is he up my ass? <laughs> is he up your ass? The clever stuff hadn't worked. I was going, sir, is God up all our asses? <laughs> Including Richard Gears. It must be crowded up there, mustn't it? <laughs> The New Testament is founded on the belief that Jesus is half man, half God, born of a virgin womb. And I think that particular little rumour <laughs> came about with Mary on the back foot. Awkward questions about the old pregnancy from Joseph. <laughs>